The purpose of this video is to help you with your trebuchet project. The trebuchet is similar to a catapult. Both the trebuchet and the catapult, trebuchet here and the catapult on the right, are examples of levers in action. Levers are one of the six types of simple machines and they have four main parts. The arm, sometimes it's called the bar, it's a stick here and on the trebuchet it's here. There's the fulcrum which is the pivot point or the hinge point on the trebuchet that's going to be located here and on this particular catapult it's right down here. It's where the arm is going to swing or be hinged. There's the effort force, which is indicated here by this red arrow. That's where the person or the machine is actually pulling on the arm. For this catapult, this is where the effort is being applied. For the trebuchet, the effort is being applied here on this end. It's the weight that pulls the arm down. There's the load which is the thing that you're trying to throw for the catapult and the trebuchet and that would be located here on the catapult and then here on the trebuchet. The location of the effort, fulcrum, and load effort, fulcrum, and load determines the class or type that each of the lever. The catapult shown here often but not always is a third class lever third class lever has the load on one end, the fulcrum on the other, and then the effort is applied somewhere in the middle. Here on the catapult, this particular type, the load would be placed here, the fulcrum or the pivot point is down here, and they're using this stick as a spring and it's going to pull on the arm right there. So this becomes a third class lever because in the center you have the resistance. The source of energy for a catapult is going to be some sort of elastic potential energy. It could be something that's stretched like this string or sometimes a rope or something will be twisted to provide that elasticity. The trebuchet on the other hand is a first class lever. That's because the fulcrum here is in the middle. The load, excuse me, the load is on this end here and the effort force, which is the counterweight, which is going to pull the arm, is located on the opposite end. So fulcrum in the middle, first class lever. The source of energy for the trebuchet is gravitational potential energy. It's the counterweight pulling down that's going to cause the trebuchet to move. The other thing that makes a trebuchet different than most catapults is this sling. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. A trebuchet works when the counterweight is, counterweight is raised here. You can see in this diagram it's being moved up. And then the counterweight will fall. When it falls, it's going to move or pull the arm with it. The arm's going to pull the sling. And then the sling will continue to move and release. But the load of the projectile will continue to move. Mechanical advantage is how simple machines make your work easier. This is an example of a simple machine. This is really a wheel, wheel and axle or um, it's a version of a gear. Uh, actually the gear is a form of wheel and axle. And with bicycles they can make it easier for you to bicycle up a hill um, if you're going up a steep hill and you click into low gear, then it just makes it easier for you to turn the pedals. Okay, so it makes it easier either because you get to use less effort, as with the bicycle gear, or you get to move a shorter distance. There are some simple machines that allow you to almost take a shortcut, or sometimes they allow you to change the direction that the effort is is moving so sometimes you're able to change the direction that you either push or pull to make something move. The throwing distance of the trebuchet is going to be dependent upon several several different things. One of them is going to be the overall energy. Okay, that's going to be determined GPE by the weight and the height 
of this counterweight here. So you're going to have to determine or ask yourself how much weight do we want to use there. Obviously more weight is going to give you a little bit more distance. The other question is the height. How far are we going to let this fall? How far do you raise it or how far do you let it fall? Those are two factors also that will affect the energy of the trebuchet and then its throwing distance. And then number two is the lever's mechanical advantage. Remember this is a first class lever. The mechanical, mechanical advantage is going to sort of multiply this force and that's going to be dependent upon something that we kind of call leverage. Most of you are kind of familiar with the idea of leverage using a stick or something to move something that's uh, or lift something that's heavy. That's going to be determined by the location of the fulcrum. Okay, so where you have this pivot point or where you kind of move the arm along is going to determine the leverage and that's going to also affect the throwing distance. So you may need to experiment a little bit to see where it's best to place that fulcrum to get the distance that you want. The throwing distance of the trebuchet is also going to be controlled by the path of the projectile, the trajectory. And that's what you're going to be looking at in math class. So partially that'll be the angle that you're throwing at, but it's also going to be involved the release point of the, of the sling. Where is the projectile released? Is it released as it's going up? Or is it released as it's going forward? Or you could release it as it's going down. That's not going to give it a very good trajectory some tips for building the trebuchet. Okay. You need to look at the potential variables. Energy is one of them. How much energy will you want the trebuchet to have? So how high should the counterweight be when you start and then how far are you going to let it fall? The leverage. Okay. Where do you want this fulcrum to be. How far down along the bar, close to the load, or how far or how close do you want it to the counterweight. And for the trajectory, where do you want the projectile to be released? At what point in the swing do you want that to be moving away from the trebuchet? All right, some suggestions that I would make for you I would limit yourselves to one of those variables, either the energy or the location of the fulcrum or the release point. And I would try and choose the simplest variable to change because remember that once you build it, you're going to be having to adjust it. So for example, adding or subtracting weight, that's pretty simple to do. Um, limiting or controlling how far it drops or how far you raise it also, that's relatively easy. Um, where you locate this fulcrum, where is the pivot point going to be, that can be moved, um, but it depends upon how you've built it. If you look at this trebuchet, for example, and they place these nails here, they're not really going to be able to change this aspect or this variable of the trebuchet. The release point, uh, that can be adjusted, but that can be a little bit tricky too. Another suggestion I'm going to have is just eliminate the sling. Getting the sling to release correctly so that it's not throwing into the ground or throwing straight up in the air can be tricky and you don't have a lot of time to troubleshoot and to build your trebuchet so I would build one without the sling. Okay, these are examples of trebuchets that don't have a sling. You can use a catapult type projectile holder sort of like a cup and then I think the release is going to be much simpler Make sure that you build a sturdy base. Okay, you need the base to be able to, it has to allow the arm to swing freely. So it needs to be somewhat open. Okay, not too much stuff in the way so that this arm can swing. It does need to be strong because when this counterweight falls, the 
trebuchet could fall apart if the base is not strong. You can tape it down um, when you're firing it, so that may help you to build a sturdier base or to help you with that. You can tape it down when you're firing it. So make a plan, and think about it, maybe do some research at home, discuss it, discuss it with the people who are in your group, and then try and get your building done um, quickly and efficiently so that you have time to troubleshoot your, your project. Good luck, I hope this helped.